Hey everybody, my name is Michael Montgomery and today we're doing self-leveling concrete floors with a twist on modern builds. My first step in this project is to build my contraption or jig for pouring DIY self-leveling concrete floors. It was designed by my buddy Ben from Homemade Modern and I'm gonna be making a couple improvements along the way. To start, I used three quarter inch plywood to build a base for my trash can or my hopper to set on. And I'm gonna use the screw to make sure it's in the center. This circular piece is gonna rest in the center of the trash can and keep it from moving along with the outside collars. After that, I attached casters onto the bottom of the base. That way it's gonna be able to wheel around. I used four inch heavy duty rubber casters with brakes. And I definitely recommend getting wheels with brakes on them. That way when you're loading the concrete, it doesn't try and run away from you. I did have a little bit of a brain fart and I used too long of screws on the single pieces of plywood. So after I cut those down with my angle grinder, I added a support block for my PVC spout. And I made sure to glue and screw this in place. Now this goes on here. Perfect. Everything that I used was two inch Schedule 40 PVC. And here you see me using a metal hanger strap also available in the plumbing section to hold my spout down. I'll make sure and leave a link to the gate valve and everything else I used in the description as well. As an extra precaution, I used a screw to lock down my trash can to the plywood base. I just used a lot of silicone to make sure it'll never leak. I also went around my PVC couplings that made the flange to allow my pipe to go through the trash can wall. This is super legit. Let's go test it out. A little while ago, I tore out my living room carpet, and as a matter of fact, that was a part of my Home Depot series, How to Undo, link down in the description. To prep my concrete subfloor, I used this silicone self-leveling sealant in all of the cracks, and I applied two coats of concrete self-leveling primer. The first batch is mixed 50-50 with water, and the second coat is full strength. And while I do this, I wanna run you through the math that I did for my space. I'll be pouring right at a thousand square feet of concrete and each bag says it'll do an eighth inch thick pour over 47 square feet, about 50. Now I want a quarter inch pour so it's less likely to crack and stronger in compression over time. So that's why my estimate came out to 40 bags, but I still ended up buying 60 because the last thing I wanted to do was run out of concrete mid pour because that would completely ruin everything. All right, hopefully there's no spills. Oh God, did you run in? put the brakes in. No, I didn't. Oh, and shout out to Ben for all of the help mixing this concrete and designing this weird contraption. First, I removed the cap. Oh no, it's working, okay. Um, I don't know why it's already pouring out. The valve isn't working. Oh, it wasn't closed all the way. It was closed most of the way. Oh God, it doesn't close all the way. It's a little bit broken. That's so weird because the same thing happened in Ben's video. We both did it on accident. And now, when I want to open this gate, it should pour out. But we're all good. Dun, dun, dun. Oh god, that's a lot. Oh, that's so much. I gotta try and get around this puddle I've made. See, this is why I made a long spout. I would not say that that went as planned, but it's going. This random tie-dye texture that I'm getting is really cool. I'm starting to think I just want to go every direction. So right off the bat, this was fun. It was really cool making a custom pattern in this concrete swirl. Now I was a little bit messy. You can see I got some concrete on my bookshelf and the walls, but don't worry, that comes off with a chisel super easy once it's dry. All in all, I took my time, and after I got my first 25 gallons poured, I went back outside where my buddy Ben was mixing up all the concrete, one more huge thanks, and we started reloading the hopper. Quick spoiler alert, we did make a mistake here, and you're about to see why, just hold time. So one cool part is it seems like I've got a decent amount of working time. I put four five gallon buckets of concrete into the hopper and I was able to spread all of it without it getting clumpy or drying on me. So that's really good to know. We don't want to waste time, but we're not in an insane rush. And now we're going to finish off the rest of this room, but I need to start down there so I don't get trapped. So I restarted my pour and everything seemed to be going according to plan until... Well, you can see my seam was starting to dry a little bit though. 
the old concrete had unfortunately started to set up a little bit too much to blend perfectly with the new concrete. Now, thankfully, this is right underneath where my bed goes, but learn from my mistake. I tried to smooth everything out with a trowel, but let's just say it didn't come out perfect. Although it was really our only mistake. And if you're not already, make sure and follow me at Modern Builds on Instagram to keep up with the projects in between videos. In fact, you probably would have seen a lot of this saga already. And this time I made sure that the refill was quick and I was back to pouring right away. So now before we get trapped, I'm gonna do the back corner of the kitchen and I wanna make sure I keep the edges wet so I'm letting it flow out a lot more quickly now. Cause I gotta come back before that dries on me. And I'm starting to like this random kind of pour pattern. I've got relatively straight lines right down there. So I'm gonna just kind of break them up a little bit and let time do its thing. As I worked the concrete out in a radius from that center point, it made a really cool geode pattern going into the kitchen area and in the living room that I really liked. Progress update, this could not be going better. And the secret to this project is keeping a wet leading edge. If it starts to dry, your blend won't work. So I gotta reload and keep moving. There's a couple different reasons that I chose the self-leveling concrete I did, and number one was color. I looked at photos online and I read on forums and people said that this had a good gray charcoal color, so I did a test bag before I bought a bunch of it and it did look good. The second reason was price. This is in the lower medium price range and Home Depot does offer a bulk discount, and the only bag cheaper at Home Depot is from the Sika brand, and I've used that and it's a little bit more brown or tan, it's still gray, but I wanted this museum gallery look. If you have clumps that you can find, get them out before they dry. If I were to suggest my improvement after doing this project, I would recommend installing some kind of a strainer inside of the trash can before the concrete hits the PVC spout. That way clumps and blobs are completely avoided and you can just toss them out each time you reload. And now let's check out these concrete floors after a word from our sponsor. Squarespace is the number one stop for a custom website, online store, or domain. Now here on Modern Builds, we are all about DIY. So if you need a website or online store, why not build it yourself with Squarespace? Squarespace's designer templates look great right off the bat, and all you need to do is drag and drop files and edit text blocks for a custom, one-of-a-kind site. Squarespace sites look great on desktop, tablet, and mobile no matter where customers find you, and they are packed with tons of great features like no limits to the number of products that you can sell using a Squarespace store, the Squarespace Video Studio mobile app that allows you to create high-level professional content for your website and social media, and don't forget member areas where you can package premium content behind a paywall and charge your members a monthly subscription fee. Now if you want to learn more make sure and follow my link in the description that's squarespace.com slash modern builds where you can build out your entire Squarespace site before entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your website live don't forget to use my code modern builds for 10% off your first site store or domain through Squarespace. One more big thanks to Squarespace now let's check out these floors. There were a couple of small bumps in my concrete that I noticed and I used a sharp Harbor Freight chisel to knock those down so that they were smooth. Then I sanded them back with 320 grit sandpaper. Even if your concrete is perfectly flat, you'll wanna wipe them down. There'll be a layer of dust after everything dries. And in case you're curious, I'm using Bear's Low Luster Sealer. This is for outdoor pavers and concrete. I figured if it was good enough to drive on, it would be good enough for foot traffic. The one really cool thing I did was I got an 18 inch roller. That way I could have really wide passes on this concrete and get less brush marks. Not to mention it made this job go by way quicker. I just made sure to do the perimeter before I filled in the center. Once I applied two coats, I let everything cure overnight before I walked on them. I also did a little bit of touch-up painting. And now let's check out these concrete floors. I am super happy with how everything came out and these floors are super flat. I really love the swirling and texture that you get out of this. If everything was the perfect same color, it wouldn't look as neat. I was able to get a really cool swirling pattern in different places and it really does remind me of a geode or some kind of rock structure. I had the one blending imperfection in my bedroom, but aside from that, these floors are pretty much perfect. All in all, I used 33 bags of self-leveling concrete, a few less than the 40 that I estimated, even though I'm still glad that I bought extra. 
So that means that I was able to get really nice gallery style floors for basically a dollar a square foot. And that's awesome. And yes, the flooring is slippery. I don't know if it's the concrete or the sealer. If I had to guess, it's probably the sealer. But you can really slide or fall on these, so be careful. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time on Modern Builds. Bye.